I'm Burke Selik. My talk today will be about sensitive information tracking in commodity IoT. This work is in collaboration between Penn State and Florida State, uh, Florida International University. So the co-author of the paper, Leonardo Bogun, is also here if you would like to chat uh, after the presentation. So in the past decade, um, a lot has changed. We have seen the rise of smartphones, self-driving cars on their way, connectivity of devices is more extensive than ever before. As you are probably aware, this has all come to be known as Internet of Things. The commodity devices that integrate physical processes with digital connectivity has had a profound impact in our daily lives. We have recently seen many applications of, of, of IoT, such as in smart home, healthcare, energy, and even farming. IoT is not magic. Just like any other computing system, IoT has a structured architecture. So in this architecture, devices have capabilities that are composed of events and actions. Events are the things that device can sense and actions represents what a device can do. Devices are connected to an edge device, which controls the communication between devices, cloud backend, and mobile application. So mobile applications are used to configure and add new devices and as well as install new IoT applications. IoT applications are simply programs that are used to create custom automations. Um, though IoT architecture has many interesting components, the focus of our work is privacy issues through IoT applications. So why IoT have been embarrassed by users and industry alike, IoT has also raised concerns about the privacy of these digitally augmented spaces. You probably have seen similar headlines that the academic literature or in that industry have recently uncovered. These network devices have access to the data that can be intensely private. For instance, when you leave home, when you sleep, or whether your door is locked or unlocked. However, in this environment, users lack visibility into who sees their private data, and they are often too blindly trusting the developers. To address this problem, we conduct a study of three major IoT platforms, SmartThings, Apple HomeKit, and OpenHab. We aim at understanding the program structures of these platforms, as well as to identify how they use privacy-sensitive data. In our study, we have identified four types of IoT-specific sensitive data that applications can access. These are the device states, device information, user inputs, and location. So after we have identified the sensitive data in IoT apps, now our goal is to analyze application source code to determine when privacy sensitive data leaves the application. So the core methodology for this we use is the static taint analysis at the source code level. Um, in static analysis, sensitive information is first identified at a taint source um, where a taint label indicating the information type is assigned. Um, thereafter, taint propagation tracks how labeled data impacts other data in a way that it might leak to original sensitive data. Finally, the impacted data is identified um, at a taint sink before it leaves the system. So in IoT application, the taint sinks are usually internet or messaging services. So um, taint analysis, either statically or dynamically, has been applied to many different settings, such as mobile apps. The previous presentation actually gave a good overview. However, from our study of three IoT platforms, we found that IoT platform possesses a few unique characteristics and challenges in terms of tracking information flow in IoT applications when compared to the IR platforms. First, IoT programming platforms are diverse and each uses its own programming language. However, in the case of Android, it has a well-defined intermediate representation and analysis can directly analyze the IR code, for instance, using the uh, suit, in, uh, suit um, framework. Um, second, in IoT, identifying sen uh, sensitive sources is quite subtle because there are many devices and each has different set of internal states which are sensitive. Lastly, each IoT programming platform has its own idiosyncrasies, 
that pose challenges to taint tracking. To address these challenges, we implement SAINT, a static analysis tool for identifying the sensitive data flows in IoT applications. SAINT includes four logical steps doing the actual analysis. First, we identify IoT-specific sources and sinks based on our survey. And then we implement a SAINT analyzer, which extracts an intermediate representation from the source code of an application. The IR is used to construct apps entry points, event handlers, and call graphs, which allows us to perform data flow analysis on it. Lastly, we have implemented an online console that you can access, actually, um, that allows users to analyze the IoT applications. So given an application source code, the console reports full data flows between the taint sources and taint sinks, the taint labels of the sensitive data, and also provides some information about the taint sinks. So based on our study, we found that IoT platforms generally structure their applications similarly regardless of their purpose or complexity. Therefore, the first step of the SAINT is translating the source code of an IoT app into an intermediate representation by exploiting this structure. To illustrate, you see the functionality of an app on your right and the IR of the app on your left. The app turns on the lights and unlocks the door and sends a short message to the security service when the users arrive home. Essentially, the IR includes three code blocks. First, devices specifies the device types and inputs required for the app functionality. Events include the event and the corresponding event handler that is invoked when this event happens. And computation rep represents the relationship between entry points and the other functions. Basically, this is where we obtain the call graph of the application. So the IR has several benefits. First, it allows us precise the model the application lifecycle. Okay. Second, it allows us to perform much more simple and effective chain tracking. For example, by associating the permissions um, with the chain tags or by knowing which functions are the entry points. Um, so after we have uh, obtained the IR, from the inter-procedural uh, inter control flow graph of an app, Saint performs taint tracking backward from taint sinks to construct possible data leak paths from sources to sinks. So the reason we use um, backward taint tracking is to reduce the processing overhead by starting from a few sinks compared to a large number of sensitive sources. So we confirmed this basically um, checking the ratio between the sinks over uh, taint sources in our analyzed applications. To illustrate, uh, I'm using a sample code from an NOA tab. So in this application, there is a sync call at place one. So the work list is initialized to be 23T. Um, here, I'm using the line numbers um, instead of the node information to label the identifiers. Then, because of the function call at two, temp cell is added to the work list, and the dependence relation between temp cell and T is also recorded into the work list too. With the similar computation, with the similar computation, at the end of the backward chain tracking, Saint finds a possible data leak path where T value corresponds to the device state obtained from the temperature thermostat's current value, um, as well as user input's threshold. And this information is sent to the adversary's phone number, which violates the user privacy, clearly. Um, so Saints backward flow tracking is both pet and context sensitive. For pet sensitivity, um, Saint collects evaluation results of the predicates at conditional branches. And then um, it checks whether the conjunction of these predicates always falls. If so, the pet is infeasible, so it, it's discarded. Lastly, um, so for context sensitivity, Saint throws away the pets that do not match the function calls and returns using that one call site sensitivity. 
And then lastly, we also consider implicit flows. Um, so saying checks the condition of a conditional branch. It determines whether it depends on a taint value. If so, it taints all the elements in the conditional branches. So another challenge for IoT programs, as I said, because they are using its own programming languages, they have idiosyncrasies that require some special treatment. So in our target IoT platform, which is SmartThings, um, it uses Groovy language, which is a dynamic object-oriented language. We have found three, this kind of idiosyncrasies that impacts the analysis precision. So I will talk about one of them here, which is called state variables. Um, state variables are stored in the external storage to persist data across application executions. For instance, an application can store switch counter in a state object in order to track the number of times the switch is turned on or turned off. So in this, Saint applies field sensitive analysis to track the data dependencies in the state objects. Okay. Um, so by means of evaluating uh, Saint, we performed a market study in which uh, we use 230 SmartThings applications. So, uh, so our corpus includes uh, 168 official and 62 third-party applications. We obtained the official applications from the GitHub, SmartThings GitHub repository and third-party applications from the SmartThings community forum. So our study shows that approximately two-thirds of the applications access variety of sensitive information in IoT applications. And Saint correctly flags 92 official and 46 third-party applications exposing at least one piece of sensitive information through the internet or SMS services. To characterize the use of sensitive data in IoT apps, this figure shows the taint source analysis of Saint. Essentially, it illustrates the type of potentially leaking privacy sensitive data that leaves the IoT apps either internet or SMS. So for instance, we found that approximately 60% official and third party applications potentially leak um, device state information. Right. So Saint also reports information about the recipient and the content when sensitive data is transmitted over a sync call. So for instance, a recipient it sent SMS is the phone number and the content is the message string. So this information, basically the, the, the same provides here who defines the recipient and who defines the content. Uh, we thought that this knowledge enables a refined understanding of a data flow which shows who sees your privacy sensitive data. To illustrate, for internet thing things, we observe that 90% of the time, the recipients and contents are defined by the developers or external servers. So overall, in summary, we introduced Saint, a static analysis tool that identifies sensitive data flows in IoT applications. And then we have evaluated Saint um, on 230 applications and found that 60% of the analyzed apps include sensitive data flows. So here, the information provided by Saint can be used by the users to evaluate privacy risks in IoT apps and make informed decisions before installing these applications. For the developers, Saint can be used to check for unintentional privacy violations. And then for the platform developers, Saint can be used uh, for vetting of, of the applications before they are distributed. Also, you can find the Saint console available at saintproject.appspot.com. Lastly, I would like to introduce you IoT Bench, which is a micro benchmark test suite to assess the effectiveness of the tools designed for IoT applications. So IoT Bench currently includes um, applications that have data leaks, Flow of applications that have some security and safety violations, 
as well as there are some malicious applications uh, migrated from mobile phone security. So each app in IoT Bench comes with a ground truth, which allows you to evaluate the effectiveness of uh, your tools by using these ground truths. So it's under continued development, so uh, always welcoming the contributions. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Uh, so I have a question. Um, in, in your examples, you talk about the exposure of sensitive information. Um, but is it my understanding that you're not attributing this to any sort of malicious behavior? You're just saying, hey, there's the potential here for some sensitive piece of information to be exposed to someone. Is that? Yeah. That's a very good question. Um, so SAINT only identifies potentially data leaks. It doesn't determine whether it's malicious or not. So because it's context dependent, dependent, and then as the previous uh, the author presented, so he needs we need to use some semantics. Maybe in the future work, some other uh, researchers may consider this. Okay. Uh, second question I had was um, when you talked about the, the the applications sending information out over the internet, um, are they using TLS by default, or is it up to the developer? Um, so it depends on uh, the IoT programming platform, like what kind of, kind of interfaces they uh, provide. As far as I remember, in SmartThings, they are just using HTTP. OK. Yeah. All right. If we have no other questions, uh, let's go ahead and thank the speaker one more time.